what is going on guys, your boys here, introducing you guys low poly designing in Cinema 4D, and uh, so you have probably like, no clue, little, like like literally if you have no clue what low poly designing is, probably a little bit hard to understand at first, uh, if you guys have a clue what it is and what it looks like, if you don't have to do it, I'm still going to teach you guys how to do this in this video, uh, all the stuff you need to know about the displacements, uh, the effectors used, and how to like get the, the, the low poly look. And so, really quickly, if you have no clue what, like, low-poly looks like, I'm going to, like, throw in some of my favorite, you know, favorite uh, low-poly designs on, like, screen right now. So, if you don't see them, uh, I forgot, but I'm definitely going to put it on, I'm making sure. But anyways, what it is, you can kind of see, it kind of looks like low, like, you know, not cartoony, uh, really nice light settings. That's mostly done in Cinema 4D and then moving into Photoshop to actually mess around with it even more, of course. But anyways, it looks really, really nice. It's like kind of like triangular, pointy, you know, objects and stuff done with like you know modeling uh, from cubes, from you know using the the cylinders or co like you know cones for the trees and stuff like that. Done. We're gonna teach you guys how to do some of those kind of stuff like that, as well as like I said, mainly showing you guys what it's all about and actually how to get the look. So we're gonna get started right with the uh, the sphere itself, just to get you know use all the uh, displacements and stuff and see what it looks like. Uh, really quick before we start as well, I want to thank you guys so much for 24,000 subscribers, I probably already did, as well as, I know it's September, a lot of you guys probably started school already, but if you guys haven't, you start like this week or at least this month, I really hope you guys have a great, 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 great year, and whatever, like I said, if you're starting high school, college, middle school, if you're in still middle school, whatever, uh, you know, all that cool stuff, I really wish you have a great year, I hope you had a great summer, I know summer's over, it sucks, it went by super fast, but I did, I was super, I was super productive, I hope you guys were as well. But anyways, yeah, I want to wish you guys that, and we're going to get going, and like I said, we're going to use this sphere. Did I miss anything? I don't know if I missed anything. No, I didn't. All right, let's get going. All right, so the sphere. What you want to do to at least get the low poly look right away, uh, for any object you use, whether you model or whatever, you're going to have these these two little yellow circles right here. They're called thongs. Or th I said I didn't say thongs, by the way. I said definitely said thongs, or thong, thong. It's Shut up, okay? I know it's not thongs. It's thong. It's like the pH sound makes like fat, like fat as in like P-H-A-T, right? Alright, <laughs> anyways, yeah. You want to delete these two things. So really quick, if I render it out to show you what it looks like. Uh, obviously, it's a sphere. It's super nice and just completely like nice and smooth, you know, surfaced sphere. If I delete this, uh, by the way, if you guys don't have these lines, these shading lines are on my object, you can simply just go to display and then shading lines. You can see if I don't have this on or if you did not have this on, this is what it would look like. But for this type of design, it's in 4D. It's kind of like crucial to actually know what the the polygons are doing uh, when you displace them and stuff. So you actually like know what you're looking for and stuff. So it's really cool to actually know what it looks like. So go to display, shading lines. The second one, these little lines right here, just so, just so you know, right? So if I delete this right here, uh, the sphere itself, you see it's super rounded. If I delete this, uh, the Fong tab, you'll see it's now it's more that's following along the the polygons path, so no longer being you know following the polygons path, but then also making it super smooth. So if I render it again, it's gonna be still smooth. Why is it still smooth, Cecil? So you're so dumb. Like no, if you go to Sphere, uh, there's a Render Perfect tab, little tab, little check thing right here on Sphere. I don't know if there's any for any other object, but for Sphere, I know for sure it's there. So just in case, just you know, whatever, if you ever render anything out, if it's not uh, you know you know low poly look, that's because this is probably still checked. Uh, but like I said, I don't know if it's for any other thing, but it's sphere it is. Uh, just uncheck render perfect, and if I render it again now, now I'll be more pointy and have that little low poly look so far. So now you're getting like somewhere closer to what it looks like, right? So now that you delete the font tab, uh, you can also mess around with the segments as well in the sphere. Uh, not the high, the radius, the segments. Uh, go down, you know, move it down with the scroll wheel or whatever. Mess around with the segments, the look of it. Uh, as well as using the type, you can also change the type. If you know, these are like more of a you know a rectangular, circular, or not circular, rectangular, squarey look to it. Excuse me. And if you just change these, you can get more of a triangular look. Uh, my favorite is this one right here, this type right here, I, the isohedron. Yeah, that. <laughs> whatever. And you change the segments around. Uh, it's kind of like my favorite look for this type of design as well. This little type right here. So if you want to use that, you could. But that's not it. If you go to your, uh, your your displacement tab and you go to displace er, and if you drag your displace er, I don't know why I keep saying er like that, but if you drag your displacer inside the sphere itself, uh, if you select the displacer, and if you try and change the strength and height, nothing will happen right now because these uh, the the uh, let's just lower that back up to that because the displacer actually has nothing on it right now. So you want to go to the shading tab under displacer and go to shader and then just go to noise. And then if we go back to object strength and move the strength around and the height, you'll see now it's doing something. Now it's deforming the sphere into more of a, a more pointy looking sphere and more out of the shape of having a, a smooth surface sphere. And you use a height as well. You can change that. 
And as long as, as well as you also go to the shading, go back to your noise, you go back to your shader noise, you click on no, noise, and click on it again, you actually have more different, you know, presets of noise, uh, kind of like a different look to it. You can see these little boxes change with different pictures. Uh, it's kind of like different presets, like different black and white levels. So you can actually mess around with that as well. So those look cool, right? And I'm just going to go back to noise for now. So you guys just know you can mess around with the sphere itself, make it more, you know, different looking. And as well with that, you also go back to Displacer tab and go to Polygon Reduction. If you drag that below the Displacer now, you can also see the higher the strength reduction, uh, the reduction strength is, uh, the the less polygons you'll see. So if I, put, if I lower this percentage down more, you'll now you'll see more polygons show up. Like these are the little lines right here. That's why I said it's kind of, kind of, kind of crucial learning this to see what the, like what it's actually doing and stuff. Let's see, you see them pointed up, you're going down, whatever. You'll see the polygons start coming back more. Uh, so that's the mention with the percent of these things are uh, really cool to know as well using you know when you do like like i'm gonna show you something at the end as well like a little cool little motion design trick with this as well uh just because i want to like you know implement some more design uh you know learning process or whatever inside just learning the displacements and all that cool stuff and what there is to offer with these cool crazy mesh and twist and whatever melt just so you guys get more familiar with them i want to introduce you guys like you know slowly more of the tools you have and you know symbol 40 usually people are just like MoGraph, Motex, Nitro Blast, have fun, yay. No, and I'm just going to show you guys more stuff with that. Anyways, back to the tutorial. Like I said, reduction strength, messing around with that, lowers the amount of polygons or, you know, makes them less if you want, if you want to have it less or more. Um, more showing, I mean. So that's something as well, to get more different of a shape from the sphere, from the sphere itself. Uh, so that's what that is, right? So that's what that, you know, that's basically what it is. Uh, deleting the font tab, adding some displacers, polygon reductions, uh, probably, like, there's probably some more stuff with it. Like, I'm not the expert at you know low poly designing, but this is definitely the basics of it, and definitely at least how to get the uh, the shape of it. So if I just run this out quickly, we're no longer at a, a you know a regular you know surface sphere where it's perfectly smooth. We're at more of a pointy triangular look to it. So it's actually pretty cool now. So yeah, that's that. If we just hide this really quickly and move on to something else, let's go on to the the having making some cool landscapes and stuff. So if you guys did not know, in the solid shapes tab is landscape. So we to click on landscape really quickly. So things like this, you'll probably see if, like I said, if you ever type in low poly in like Google and stuff, you'll see like landscapes with trees and all that cool stuff and mountains in the background. This is definitely how they probably do it. Either they use landscapes or they use the plane, which for like normal, uh, just regular normal flat scenes and stuff. But for now, I'm gonna show you what the landscapes actually puts like you know cool, uh, what do you call it, like snow on top of it and stuff. So anyways, if you go click on landscape. Click on size, and if we just mess around with this, put this up to maybe, I don't know, like 250. Mess around with this and this. Of course, if we click on landscape, and since the Fong tab is not deleted yet, if I render it out, it's going to be perfectly smooth and stuff. So we're going to delete this, simply like just like that. And now it's going to be more ragged and pointy and stuff. And if I just quickly steal the displacer and the polygon reduction from the sphere, and just drag it right onto the landscape just to show you what it looks like, you'll see you get the low poly look back. And you have these crazy, you know, amount of like, you know, polygons coming out and pointy and little raggedy looking. And we're just going to go back to Displacer really quickly. Object. And we'll change the height to like 5. And we'll lower the strength just a tad. And I should put the height up actually. Right. There we go. Get more of a nice, a cleaner look to it. Low poly look to it. And if I just render this out now, you'll see more of pointy, you know, nice looking landscape mountainous, low poly mountains basically. So if I just throw in like a cool little, uh, it's a brown, it's probably, like, it's probably disgusting in this Lightroom, but of course a better Lightroom and a better material will be a better design than you're seeing right now. But if I just run this out really quickly, you see you have, you know, brown, like, like I'm just making this look like dirt, you know, it can be like ice if you want, if you have like a nice ice, um, you know, material, you want to put that on the mountain, you could. But for now I'm going to put snow, quote unquote snow, I'm going to use a white material and put snow on it. So to basically do that, I'm going to make a duplicate of the landscape, simply control C, control V. Click on the landscape again and mess around with the size just a little bit, right? Just a little bit. Mess around with the, the size of it. And if I just switch off this brown that I have here, the brown material to this white one, just simply just drag it on top of it, you can now see there'll be white on top of this brown. So if I just quickly render it out now, you're going to see now more little white spots, which can also resemble snow that's on top of the, uh, the, the mountain itself. So it's pretty cool to know how to do that as well. You probably see that a lot as well. Uh, if you want to use the selecting random selection tool to actually select certain parts of it you could as well uh, meaning I'll show you that in a second so you see how that looks like right but if like I said the random selection tool if you press C in your keyboard to make things editable uh, simply make things editable it comes into a little triangle here 
if you go to your modeling tab right here then everything's starting you know super blue and highlighted with little lines all over the place if you simply just go to your live selection tool which is the first tool and right next to the movement tool and all that stuff and if you click and drag and you can basically like cover and select I you know a lot of it. I'm just clicking and dragging and moving you can select a lot of the landscape itself and then if you want you can also right click uh, smooth shift or bevel or whatever make a little bit of a bevel maybe come off the the, the mountain a little bit uh, this is like I don't know just another way just curious if you guys are like curious of like what you know all this other stuff does like I said I want to limit you guys to doing certain things but you can pop it off just a little bit like I said I just selected it and if you want to select more just go back to your live selection and hold shift so I can select more otherwise if you just click it will reset it you don't want to do that and just press control V to go back and like I said just right click bevel and simply just click anywhere and move left or right to make it bigger and then uh, like I said you also once it's selected you also select the material you want and drag it on and there you have it you'll have brown and then white on the selected part that's if you want to do it that way but I'm pretty sure duplicating the landscape is way more quicker and easier so that's that and to make a tree I'll do that as well I'm gonna like I said I'm gonna keep stealing displacer and polygon reduction so I keep on adding and wasting your time uh, here we just move that there I'm gonna make a tree right to make a tree I'm gonna basically use these solid shapes and I'm gonna use uh, maybe cone right you can use cone or you can use pyramid if you want to have more you know different tree looking or just keep on using cone and um, what I say cone and pyramid to get different trees so it does not doesn't look the exact same and we have just different things around because of course not every tree looks the same right just move the height mess around with the cones height and stuff and then simply just drag the displacer and polygon reduction inside your cone you'll see it looks like this looks cool render it out really quickly it's no longer smooth and stuff maybe just actually just mess around with the height right there we go and then render it out nice looks really cool is right there and then go ahead and go ahead and use the cylinder right maybe we'll use that mess around with the radius and height of course and then drag this down for the little basically the stem of the uh, not the stem the, the trunk of the the cylinder so there or the tree this is a tree guys if you didn't know but yeah something like this is how you probably make a tree uh, if you probably want to look up low poly palm tree looks or low poly tree tutorial or whatever you can definitely find some different you know types of trees with nice settings as well to use uh, probably like cool landscape mounds as well uh, but anyways I really do hope you guys took note and just like how to use like displacers and actually get the low poly look like I said it's not the the best tutorial on how to make the best scene of course in the world but this is definitely the basis of low poly designing and it's really cool like I said and it's really cool to learn as well and like I said I want to I want to push you guys to it and one last thing I wanted to show you was something cool motion designing because you guys really wanted to learn more motion designing as well so this little something you can do with the stuff we learned today with the motion designing so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag in a mo text really quickly it's gonna be a logo of course I'm just gonna drag a text because I don't feel like dragging in a logo right now I'm gonna name this Sesso and I'm gonna use the crappiest font ever because I'm just don't want to change it and so right now I'm gonna go ahead and just drag in the displacer right I'm gonna drag in put it on my mo graph or my mo text delete the font tag go to my displacer shading add the stuff I did before right the noise and mess around with the the strength and stuff right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back to my polygon reduction drag that below the displacer as well I'm just going fast because I already did this before right and I'm just gonna put this to I don't know whatever just make it look super super weird right now and then I'm gonna also drag in twist right you also use like I said you also use twist or like anything else in here for as well as when you're modeling your your scene or whatever you can use any of these things as well uh, simply it's really easy to use some of them or most of them all you gotta do is drag it below or add as a child to whatever object you're using and mess around with it and see what it does of, of course twist is gonna twist my stuff so I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this here as well I'm gonna put all this to zero keyframe the camera really quickly and what I want to do I'm gonna keyframe each and every one of these things if you guys watch my basic tutorial on how to use motion design you guys know these little circles right here are keyframe keys so if I just click on the strength here keyframe it click on the polygon reduction and keyframe I don't know why there's people random people screaming outside my window and I'm gonna mess around with the angle of my twist now and keyframe that as well I'm gonna mess around with that right make it crazy keyframe it so everything is keyframed now at a really crazy setting if I go to 160 around 160 on my timeline and I'm gonna change everything back to a normal setting keyframe it and I'm gonna change this back to zero keyframe it and then change the twist uh, 
back to zero as well and keyframe it. So this is something cool. Like we just learned this all this all this cool stuff today, right? The displacer and the polygon reduction. You can use this as text to make some really cool, cool abstract, I don't know, kind of like a Transformers intro. You ever seen that intro? Where it's kind of like really like crazy and abstract and do like weird twists or whatever, and then it appears to be your name or a logo. So this is something cool as well if you want to render this out and mess around with that as well. Uh, so I kind of like implemented like kind of two tutorials in it. Dog, don't start barking, please. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, obviously, 200 likes on this video equals the secret down below in the description. And if you don't follow me on Twitter, at SSOHQ, please do. And if you don't check out my Selfie store, my graphic store, selfie.com slash SSOHQ, really great place to find some really great products and stuff. So anyways, thank you guys so much. And I, like I said, hope you guys have a great, great new year. And I hope you guys have a new year in school, of course. I'm not talking about, like, New Year's, not January. It's goddamn fucking September. But anyways, like I said, have a great school year. And I hope you had a great summer. SSOHQ out. Peace.